Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Underbelly Hours. Today is going to look a little bit different. We're starting this new series that you guys might remember from back in the radio days called Chicago Voices. Where we're going to talk about all sorts of people who work more in the behind the scenes of Chicago's music industry. So not necessarily always artists, but people who are part of charity organizations, concert promoters, and more. I'm beyond delighted to announce today's first two guests who are members of an incredible organization called Guitars Over Guns. Let's dive right in. They got to come stay a while. Like listening to new music? Want to know a band before they get popular? Tune into the Underbelly Hours and discover the best of local unsigned musicians. Don't miss out on the next big thing. Okay, so we'll just jump into it. Hi, everybody. Welcome back. And with me today are some incredible people from an incredible organization called Guitars Over Guns. It's all about teaching music and uh, giving life skills in the form of the arts to younger people. It's based in Miami and also right here in Chicago. We got Stephanie and Alondra. Can you guys both introduce yourselves, who you are, and just what you do with the program? Hi, I'm Stephanie. I have been a mentor with Guitars Over Guns since 2017, and I am now a site coordinator with Evergreen Middle School, which is where I met Alondra as a sixth grader in 2017 when I was brand new. So hi, uh, my name is Alondra, and just like Stephanie, I started the program in 2017. Um, I am now an alumni at Evergreen Academy. Um, and I am really excited to be here today. Awesome. Well, thank you guys both for spending, taking the time to talk with me today. I'd like to maybe start off with a little bit, um, just talking about the mission of Guitars Over Guns in general. I did post a little bit about Guitars Over Guns last week to our social media pages, because I saw that you guys just released a cool new album. But in general, I'm sure this is an organization that is very new to a lot of people in Chicago. So Stephanie, if you don't mind, could you take a second and just walk us through what the mission of Guitars Over Guns is? as well as maybe why you were attracted to be a mentor with it. Um, Guitars Over Guns believes that all young people um, should have the opportunity to succeed in life um, regardless of where their zip code and where they were born is. And that they should have access to arts, they should have access to education um, of, of everything and they believe in the power of mentorship behind that. And it, it really started um, with a good friend of mine from the University of Miami, uh, Chad Bernstein is the founder and CEO of Guitars Over Guns, and he's still in Miami. Um, he was volunteering his time um, at schools around our college campus when he was in grad school and, uh, and teaching guitar lessons and ran into someone named John O, who's now the CFO, I believe, um, who's just like, I, I call John O like Uncle John O of, of the group. He's, he's just a wonderful person to be around in, in leadership. Um, and it grew and it grew in Miami and he brought it to Chicago and um, our regional director and kind of like the father of uh, the Chicago schools is Andrew DeMuro who um, he and Phil Jacobson, and Phil Jacobson was in a jazz ensemble with me at University of Miami. Um, they started up the program here and we have now several mentors here, several different sites and some, some partnerships. We have Haven Studios as a, a really good partner uh, down in the Bronzeville. And um, what attracted me to it, I, I had been watching Chad's stories develop over him working with students, working with middle schoolers specifically. Um, I'd been watching them kind of from like the back seat or like, you know, you watch a bus go by and you're like, I wonder where that bus is going. I'm not ready to get on the bus yet. Um, and um, I had a really good dinner with Andrew and Phil shortly around my, my birthday of spring of 2017 and uh, made the decision to jump on board the following fall because I knew it was something I, I had to do. I had adults in my life growing up specifically in seventh grade. I'm still friends with her, my seventh grade language arts and homeroom teacher, Kelly Rixner. Um, she's probably gonna listen to this too. Um, she called me her sparkle. And um, she just, um, she was there for me in the classroom, outside the classroom. 
And she was just this adult presence that was someone I could talk to that wasn't my mom, that I, you know, I didn't, I didn't need a mom. I needed just someone who knew things to, to be there for me. And I, I never asked her to be there and she always has been. And I, I always wanted to be that for someone else. With music as, as the, the picnic blanket that we were all laying on top of. <laughs> yeah, I think we seriously underestimate, especially here in America, sometimes the power of a good teacher a good mentor, a good adult figure really can be life-changing. If you guys were initially based in Miami, correct? What prompted the new start of a new chapter here in Chicago? I'm not sure like where Chad's thoughts were. I know he grew up here and from the North Shore and his father and mother were still here at the time. Uh, I think it's like just recognizing the need for it. There are, there are schools that don't have the arts programming. There are schools that don't have the same access that um, Highland Park High School gets or that Niles North, like I feel like Niles North is like this, like baby got, like, grandfathered in school to all arts there. And I have friends that teach there. So hi, Dr. DeHaan and hi, Mrs. Page, <laughs> if you're listening to this too. Um, they just, there's they're schools here that need it. And there's, there's students that need that need us and that need music because, I mean, budget cuts were real and the arts, the arts were neglected. Right. That's something that we've talked about before on the show too, is definitely the idea that the arts seem to be the first thing to go when budgets are cut, when, you know, people need to save money and it really shouldn't be. It's so important, not only for emotional development, but also just to have something to do you know, something to delve into and watch yourself grow. So with that in mind, Alondra, I'd like to hear a little bit about your experience because you're an alumni of the program. How did you get started with this? And I guess what were some of the biggest takeaways that you've gotten from this program? Yeah, so um, I was in sixth grade and I really wanted to do something. Um, music has always been one of my interests. Um, I feel like for a lot of young people like me, Music is like the center of our attention, you know, when we're bored or when we're going through a little space or something. Music is, has always been there, right? And I saw that um, one of the after school programs was music based. And so I joined. And at first I was skeptical because, you know, new middle school, new environment, I was scared. But um, as soon as I went in, people were so accepting, like, I made new friends there. Um, I learned how to play multiple instruments, which is something like so cool that I still, um, you know, do because I am an alumni. Um, and yeah, one of, you know, my best friends, I met her there and it's been such an important part of my life because I've developed so much because of the program. Um, the mentors, they're always there for me, you know, maybe if I don't, you know, see it, they're always pushing me. Um, which is something that I like appreciate so much. And I think that a lot of young, young people should be aware of this program because I feel like in society right now, you know, it's kind of hard to stay away from that negative, you know, aspect. Um, and music has been a positive thing that has helped me stay away from negative. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, especially, right, if you consider this year, this year we're coming out of a pandemic year, um, nationwide rates of anxiety and depression are at an all-time high, especially in young people. You know, it's important, it's so important to have something to do when those blockades strike and when those mental health crises strike. But you mentioned multiple instruments, and that got me a little intrigued because this organization is called Guitars Over Guns, right? So maybe if someone's first looking it up, they're thinking, okay, it's just about guitars, right? but evidently not, because you just mentioned you learned multiple instruments. Okay, so I'm biased because my favorite instrument is the bass, which is the first instrument I ever picked up. Um, but we have multiple instruments, including bass, guitar, drums, ukulele, we have a piano, keyboard, we have everything, right? Um, so as for now, I only know how to play bass. I know how to play a little bit of drums. Um, I'm learning keys right now, um, you know, and I really, you know, 
enjoy that my mentors have patience with me because sometimes I'm like, wait, what? Wait, what? <laughs> and, you know, they're always there to help me, which is great because if, you know, if I need, oh, and I sing. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> Do you make your own songs too? Yes, I have a few here and there. <laughs> was that something that was also part of the program a little bit, songwriting, or is that something you just picked up on your own? Um, yeah, we had sessions where we would just sit down, get a piece of paper, and jot down ideas. Um, those were like the chill moments and stuff, or, you know, whenever a song had like a bad word or anything, we would try to change the lyrics to something more appropriate. Um, so there was always songwriting involved. Um, this summer, there is going to be a program um, that is more focused on songwriting um, from Guitars Over Guns, which I'm very excited about. Um, yeah, because a lot of the kids that are still in middle school will have the chance to also join the program. That's awesome. And I know that Stephanie can also relate to writing songs and being a performer because that's what she does as well. So this question is going to go out a little bit to both of you because, you know, as we kind of alluded to before, right, when we first started talking about guitars over guns, the arts are something that's usually overlooked. It's, it's kind of deemed, deemed a frivolity, frivolity a little bit sometimes, sometimes by society. It's seen as something that's not really necessary. necessary. But, but for, for both, both of you, what do you think it is about songwriting itself that... Um, is really important to you guys, I guess, just personally. Why, why do you write songs and why do you think we should continue teaching people, young people especially, to write their own songs? And for me, it's, it's a really safe place of expression. I feel like the, the, like the safety net of music gives me the comfort to say things that I might not just outwardly say about how I feel about something or if there, there is a story that I, I see maybe in someone else's life and I want to tell it uh, or tell it from my point of view or my perspective, um, I feel safe by that, by that, by music to carry that through. And it's also how I relate to people, like where they say, where words stop, music begins. And um, if I don't know what to do or what to say, I can usually just turn to, to chords to take me there. And uh, it's how I absolutely connect with, with any with the closest people in my life I connect to musically first. Um, personally, as a teenager, it's sometimes a little bit hard to express myself with words. So I think that by songwriting, um, I let myself be free. You know, as soon as I grab my pencil and my notebook, just start writing and writing and writing. And when I'm done, I read it and I'm like, wow, like that's what I've been feeling. Right. So I think that songwriting is a new way for us to express ourselves in ways that we maybe cannot by talking, because sometimes talking may be a little bit awkward <laughs> for some people. But writing and singing and playing, it's more like a nice feeling, you know, for sure. How do you think then songwriting and being in music has helped you guys develop outside of just musically? Has it empowered you? Has it um, helped you develop certain skills outside of simply, you know, learning how to sing songs? I think I get, I get to brag a little bit on Alondra here and being it just like, because I, I, I met Alondra when she was in sixth grade and uh, I watched her develop through all the normal things that middle schoolers go through but with music there as kind of her backbone and as like the, the place she could always go to, uh, I watched, I watched you and Alondra, I watched you like navigate through a, a boyfriend, a, a breakup, a best friend, like, and the relationships and how all of that, I know you know exactly who I'm talking about, but how, how you went through it and came out of it on the other side. And now you're, you're still great friends, like you're good friends. And, um, I, th I think that we have to tribute music as a safe place of expression or being forced to stay in the band with people that you were going through drama with because it, it is an ensemble-based program at Evergreen. And uh, putting that aside to get through band rehearsal made all of you stronger people and all of you grow so much and so much strength of character was developed from seventh into eighth grade for you. 
No, yeah, like I totally agree. Um, I feel like music empowers me in a way, you know, like when I'm in the car or like when I'm on the bus, I put on my headphones and I start listening to music. And then I end up leaving the bus feeling like I'm the like main character of like this whole world. Like, I don't know, in a way music empowers me. It makes me feel like, you know, open to things, um, you know? And I feel like not only for me, but you know, it can be anyone. I know, you know, friends of mine that don't like playing instruments, but when they hear music, they feel, you know, they feel free. So I think that music is, you know, an everyday thing for me and it's made me stronger. Not only that, but the people that have led me to play um, music have also been there, you know, my mentors. Um, yeah, music is like the biggest part of my life, probably. So good to hear. I love hearing things like that. It makes me think back on when I was in high school, because I was very much in the same boat, um, early middle school. And uh, it's it's just cool to see that the way that music can really help you navigate some of the more difficult parts of your life and make you feel like you're worthy of trying new things, of putting yourself out there. Uh, super cool stuff to hear. When did my room grow darker? I want to talk a little bit as well about I the album because the Guitars Over Guns um, just released oh, an album with a lot of really cool songs. I'm not sure, do you guys know any of the people who are on this album? Um, I'm lucky that um, in pre-pandemic times, we travel, we from Chicago mentor, the whole team here travels to Miami every year in August and we do like four days of institute and it's training, it's, uh, it's uh, classroom training, it's cultural sensitivity training, it's, um, it's um, inclusivity training. We, we, do, we do so much uh, trauma-informed care. Um, so the people, I know all the people on this album and um, most, of them, most of them were from Miami and uh, I'm so proud of the work that they put into it. I know many of us made submissions and it was a really tough selection committee. I, I actually wrote my first song in years I finally, I know Adela, we had talked for like a little over a year ago and I was like, I just can't, I haven't written songs in a bit. I've just been busy making money in a cover band and, and uh, had been in a place where I was afraid to express myself. And I, would, I read an email about the album, about how everyone is encouraged to participate and submit. And I read the deadline and I shared it with my, my songwriting partner and, and was encouraged to do it and we did it. And it got a really good song out of me that began what will be a full length uh, EP on our standpoint, but was ultimately not chosen for the album. Um, but yeah, there are there's some talent there and there's some, some really strong words. A lot of it was um, my friend Mish in Miami uh, wrote a song and um, so much of her emotion went into it and we, we, we lost a mentor this year. Uh, the pandemic, as you mentioned before, has uh, suicide rates, depression, and anxiety rates gone up. And we, we did lose a mentor by suicide. And um, the emotion put into Mish's vocals and her vocal performance that they got out of her for the her song is captured so it's earth shattering when I listen to her song on this album. So I'm, I'm really, really proud of her work and that and her vulnerability and expression. And it, this album came like, at, like I want to call it like the Guitars Over Guns tribute to Monty, who we did lose, but it's it's a tribute to the work that like every every student, every mentor could have been Monty. We just have not made that decision. And he did, and uh, now we're still here for him and his family. We were talking a couple weeks back on my radio show, the the show I do on 103.1 FM with Hope for the Day, and um, they mentioned it's been staggering the amount of people who we've lost last year to, to mental health crises. And it's beautiful to hear that you guys have tributed so much to him in this album. It's incredible. And um, 
it's really a fantastic work as well. I mean, I was listening through it and I was touched by not only the range of genre, there was also just a incredible wealth of talent in this album as well that is inspiring to hear. You know, when you get like a good compilation album like this with so many different types of people, so many different artists, it's inspiring. Do you guys do this often or was this just kind of something that happened uh, as a fundraiser last year and um, it's the first time you guys are doing something like this? Yeah, this is the first time, the first Guitars Over Guns album put out by by um, the mentors and staff. And I, I, I love that they, they did it. I love that they got funding for it. And I, I really hope that this is just the beginning because it's really, we love collaborating with one another. I love, and I love getting to champion the people. Like I get, I love getting to see what someone does in the classroom. And then if I can go see someone's gig or hear their new recording, I'm like floored. I'm like this, like I look next to the person, I'm like we, we like, played this new socio-emotional learning activity game together. And I had no idea that you're like, you should be famous. Like you're, why aren't you famous? You know, like I'm starstruck by the people that I, I get to call my friends and my colleagues. And uh, I think albums like this um, just bring that to light more for everyone that that's involved in the program. And I guess that our students get to see too. I feel like our students, most of our gigs pre-pandemic and like coming out of it are like in bars where, 11 to 17 year olds aren't really allowed unless there's 17 year olds on drums and we got special permission and they have to have big black X's on their hands and play with us. Um, so it's, it's great for the students to see their mentors really shine too. Alondra, this is a question going to you now because we just talked about collaborations. Is there like a collaboration that you remember really well that you did when you were in Guitars Over Guns or um, what's your favorite, I guess, moment? I know we talked about like what things you learned from the program, but what's a moment that you're always going to remember from Guitars Over Guns? So the most memorable um, collaboration that we had was um, one that we did um, for, I think it was spring break, that we got to go to this studio and multiple people, like groups from Guitars Over Guns from different schools got to meet together and we recorded one song. I think it was a two-day process um, and I got to meet new people and um, hear different types of, you know, new talent. Um, yeah, the video is in Guitars Over Guns on Facebook. Um, we did Sunflower by Post Malone. That was probably one of my most favorite collaborations, um, but my favorite moments um, and Guitars Over Guns were probably the festivals we got to perform at. Um, at um, yeah, in the summer, those were so much fun. Um, we got to hear different bands, you know, older bands, and we were like the little kids. So it was like kind of nerve wracking at times, but it was super fun. Um, those were like just the best moments. So good to hear. I was muted for a little bit there. Um, now out of my personal curiosity, You've been in this program, you've come out of it, you've, it's empowered you, you're a songwriter, you're a bassist, a singer, a drummer now, right? All these incredible things. What role do you see music playing for you in the future? And I'm not asking you, what do you think you're going to be when you're like, you know, 18, 20, but just what are some of your personal goals with music in the future? Um, yes, yeah, so my mentors have really inspired me to help the younger generation. Um, I think that you know, us kids are going to make the new future. And I think that it's important to spread, um, you know, the word of music. Music has helped me so much in my life. Um, and I feel like there's probably so many kids my age or younger or a little bit older that are going th through things and don't have that guide. They don't have that people that can help them. So when I get older, I feel like with music, I would like to be a mentor like Stephanie or like my mentors, um, Andrew and Phil um, or Adam. Like, I want to be able to help, you know, with the same way that they helped me. Um, of course, it's for me, I don't think it's going to be like, you know, a daily thing, but as long as I can help people the same way that I got help, that would just be amazing. That sounds awesome, Alanja. That's awesome. That's such a cool goal to have. Um, and now, of course, the most important question of all, I have to ask. We have musicians here on the podcast. Got to ask this question. What is one 
artists right now that you really look up to? And I know that can be hard. I know that can be super difficult because there's so many that come to mind. But off the top of your head, if you're thinking about like artists that you love for their music, for their lyrics, maybe it's just something that they do outside of music itself. Maybe they're really good like philanthropists or activists. What's one artist that you guys both are looking up to right now and are gaining inspiration from? That is a really, really hard question. Um, I have so many artists that just come up to my mind. Um, I listen to a lot of um, classic rock music. And my favorite um, artist, probably Freddie Mercury. She's no longer here. So for right now, I think it's probably Elton John. Um, I just really like his music. He's so free, kind of gives me Lady Gaga vibes, um, as you know. Totally. Um, <laughs> they did not like each other. Um, but like, yeah, Elton John, his lyrics are so empowering, you know, his journey. And um, for me, I like being unique. I do not like being like everybody else. And I feel like he just gives me that, you know, certain, certain, yeah, of being me. He's definitely got some cool costumes too. <laughs> I love that you said Elton John. Cause like when I when anyone asks me like what's your artist that you're looking up to, I first go to like, well, what song, no matter what, if the song comes on, I immediately feel good. I feel at home. I have to sing along or dance along to it. And Tiny Dancer, like it gets me every time. I, I could be smiling, I could be crying, I could be, I, I always have to sing along. And it's it it, whoever's in the room with me, I'm like, hold me closer and I bring them in, trying to dance. <laughs> um, but I think like, I've also been kind of going back to like, what are the good songwriters? Like what are some powerful like women? Like who, who laid down like a path for, for us to follow along? I went back and I like watched some little Patty Smith videos. Woo! And I saw her at Riot Fest a couple of years ago and she was just like, Mom, oh, it's so great. She was she like waves like hi guys, like like oh there's mom on stage. But like back in, in the 70s, she harnessed some sort of pain and she delivered it directly. And where I'm like big with movements, she just like groundedly delivered it. Um, so I, I look, I've been looking to her and like Alanis Morissette, man, and she's still going, you know, and she's still hustling. She's got a Broadway show. Um, I, I really, really look up to her. Um, and I look up like Lady Gaga is one of the best businesswomen I think we've ever been able to watch grow, you know, from Stephanie Germanata, who did indie artist tours that no one cared about to Lady Gaga that we know like her whole business it's fantastic which is also part of why the artist in me is like don't like her it's too corporate um i appreciate it and i it's definitely she figured it out you know so I, yeah i i love that and i also man i look up to my students like alondra you picked up that bass and like you're a good bass player and watching you and, and Adam learn through like what learning through like walking bass lines and some technique and playing some songs that I couldn't pick up a bass and figure it out and you know speaking this whole different musical language and watching you grow like that that's an inspiration to me every time now I try to learn a new song on keyboards or synth or ukulele I, I, I picture Alondra or one of our other students for the first time picking up an instrument and wondering how are they going to tackle this song and that inspires me every time. That's awesome. So many good influences there for people to choose from. All right so we're coming out a little bit to the end of our little segment here so I want the listeners though to be left with one final thought from each of you guys about the Guitars Over the Guns program. Obviously you know this is an incredible program it helps people develop themselves not only like musically but also emotionally helps you get more confident in yourself and we want to encourage people to donate we want to encourage people to participate in guitars over guns so what's one quick sentence from each of you that's just um kind of sums up why you think people should be supporting this program it's a little more than one sentence um, but students and like all humans but students especially right now need a sense of belonging. They need to be connected and they need 
some sort of family, like chosen family, music family, artistic family, a safe place. Because I know we started this conversation a few weeks ago after some of the, like the peaceful protests for Adam Toledo. And I really do believe that had Adam Toledo had a place to go after school, had he had connection, had he had positive influences and an instrument in his hand and not like paint cans or not anything else that could have gotten him in trouble uh, or just hanging out with people that could have been otherwise in trouble or in a music room instead of on the street. Um, I absolutely believe he would still be here and I believe that any of our students are Adam Toledo. Any of them are. And that is why we need to keep giving them a place, a safe place to feel connected and feel like they belong. Uh, yeah, I totally agree. Um, I think for teenagers, if you want a place to go, if you want people to hear you out, if you want to play, if you want to sing, you know, Guitarist Over Guns is the right program for you. Um, you know, everyone will welcome you with open ha hands, no matter your gender, your you know, your race, sexuality, nothing. I mean, it's just a place for you to be yourself and to sing and to play and do what you want to do. Awesome. And now, where can people find out more about you two if they're interested? I'm going to link all of the Guitars Over Guns stuff, but uh, do you either of you have projects that you'd like to give a quick shout out to? Um, I Actually, today's an exciting day because I'm premiering a video today. <laughs> I have... I, so I grew up in musical theater and I, I left the world of theater uh, quite a long time ago and was pushed to undertake this video. So I have, I did all six characters of Cell Block Tango from Chicago and that video is nice. today. Um, so by the time this, this podcast comes out, it'll already be out and a YouTube link will, will be there. And I'm just so excited to have shared six different sides of me and to make my my high school mentor mr hildreth um who's no longer with us and who inspired this tattoo that i share with another friend of mine um i made him proud in, in this video and i'm really excited to show that and you can check me out on instagram at buena frave g-w-e-n-a-f-r-a-b-e -E, buena frave um for any other updates and for for random facts about guitars over guns and random braggings about my students and other mentors this year. Um, personal projects, I would say um, I'm getting into the studio soon. So I will have more dancing on my Instagram page. You can follow me at Ali Huga, A L L Y H Y U G A. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah, um, you know, give me a shout out or something. <laughs> Awesome. Well, thank you guys both for coming on the show. It's so wonderful to talk to you both. And one more time, um, please, if you're listening to this right now and music is important to you, you've heard from these two ladies firsthand about their experiences, please consider donating to Guitars Over Guns. Maybe go check out their website. Um, if you're a musician yourself, which I know a lot of you are out there, listeners, check out the mentorship page to see if you're something that is um, interesting to you that would work for you to be a mentor in this program because we really do need especially in times like these, but anytime really, we do need to put more of a focus on art for younger people. It's very important um, for all the reasons that these ladies listed. So thanks again. And uh, yeah, we'll, uh, I'm sure we'll talk at some point in the future. For now, go follow Guitars Over Guns and these two lovely ladies on all of their projects. Just take me to the place just take me to the place where love can save the day. And that's it for this episode of Chicago Voices and Underbelly Hours bonus episode. If you like what you hear, be sure to subscribe to the Underbelly Hours on all and any of your favorite streaming platforms, including YouTube, Spotify, 
uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Stitcher, and Aux Audio, a Chicago podcasting platform. Feel free to let us know what other organizations or musicians you'd like to hear from. And as always, thanks for listening. Thanks for supporting Local. And be sure to listen to your favorite artists. Support them during these times. We'll see you next week with some more musicians. Bye. Are you tired of listening to the same bands over and over again? Over and over and over. Stop listening to what mainstream media chooses for you. You filthy casual. And try something new. Tune in to the Underbelly Hours every Sunday night for exclusive interviews, unreleased content, and more from the depths of Chicago's underground. I'm Adela. I'm Dan. Now available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or anywhere you stream your podcast, thanks to Ox Audio, a Chicago-based podcasting platform.